The latest survey by global market research firm Ipsos on what worries Malaysians points to persistent concerns over not just bread and butter issues, but also graft, despite Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's ongoing message against corruption. Say experts. The poll result raises questions about how effective his government is after 15 months in power. A previous study by Poster Medica Center in November 2023 also found that his approval rating had dropped to 50% from 68% in December 2022. The Ipsos study, which polled 500 Malaysians via an online portal system, found that 47% of Malaysians believe the country is headed in the wrong direction in March 2024 compared with 26% in January 2023, right after Datuk Seri Anwar took office. Of that 47%, their primary concerns are financial and political corruption, inflation and unemployment, followed by poverty and social inequality. And taxes. Politically, analysts say these concerns could have a direct impact on the upcoming Kuala Kubu Baru by-election in Selangor on May 11. The results should be worrying to the Anwar government. As the issues which people are most concerned about pertain to socio-economic ones, which they expect the government to resolve, as opposed to racial and religious issues that are beyond any government's capability to resolve. So, if Enwa cannot reign in inflation, control corruption and hold off on the new taxes fast enough, he risks losing more votes in the by-election and the next general election. And thereby possibly losing his government, Dr. Oei San, a senior fellow at the Singapore Institute of International Affairs, told the Straits Times. Dr. O said that dissatisfied supporters of the ruling coalition Pakatan Harapan PH are likely to sit out the by-election. As the alternative is voting for the opposition Perikata Nasional PN, which is dominated by Islamist Party Part 1 Islam Se Malaysia PES, based on his observations of Malaysia's by-election voting patterns over the years. Mr. Anwar's supporters are usually ethnic Chinese, Indians and progressive urban Malays. In Kuala Kubu Baru, the racial breakdown is 46.4% Malay, 30.7% Chinese, 18% Indian and 5% others, out of 40,015 eligible voters recorded in 2023. PS and their allies in PN have been gaining ground among the Malay voters. If more Malays than non Malays hate to the ballot box, there is a risk of the government losing the seat. The Selangor State Assembly seat was vacated after the death of its three term PH Assemblyman Lee Ki Haying on March 21. A study by OSEAN plus three macroeconomic research office on February 20 found that Malaysia's inflation is cooling. But economist Paul Anthony Mariados, who lectures at Taylor's University, said on March 7 that the ringgit's steady depreciation versus the US dollar since the start of the year has left many Malaysians feeling the pinch as imported consumer products cost more as a result. It does not help that there is a perception among some that Mr. Anwar is favouring his allies when it comes to corruption, despite his electoral promise to combat graft. His deputy Ahmad Zohid Hamidi received a discharge not amounting to an acquittal over his corruption charges in September 2023. Similarly, the reduction in sentence from 12 to 6 years for convicted former Prime Minister Najib Razak by the Pardons Board in February also did not go down well, especially with Mr. Anwar's supporters. The graph probes by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission into former Finance Minister Daim Zainuddin and his wife, as well as former Prime Minister Mohatar Mohamed's sons, Tan Sri Moksani Mohatar and Mr. Mazan Mohatar, have also caused a stir. Dr. Bridget Welsh, an honorary research associate at the University of Nottingham Asia Research Institute Malaysia, 
say the increased discontent is no surprise as Mr. Anwar's traditional base of support has become less optimistic and holds a negative perception of the country's economy. Sadly, one of the problems is that the government is not listening, such as moving ahead in programs such as PODU that received a lot of resistance, seeing that it was poorly implemented. Said Dr. Welsh, referring to Malaysia's central database hub PODU. The database is a key component of a wider plan by Mr. Anwar to reduce government subsidies, estimated at RM64 billion 18 Singapore dollars. 2 billion a year, by starting targeted subsidies and direct cash transfers based on metrics such as household income, family size and monthly expenditure. But there are concerns that the system, which stores personal details, including identification card numbers and home addresses, can be hacked. This resulted in the registration of only 10.6 million out of Malaysia's 30. 4 million population. University Kobangsan Malaysia's Institute of Ethnic Studies Deputy Director Kartini Abu Talib pointed out that Mr. Anwar has a lot of work to do to convince the public that he can bring Malaysia to greatness. The increase of the sales and services rate from 6% to 8% across sectors such as finance and leisure, unemployment, rising cost of living, Increased mortgages and continuous inflation are the challenges that Anwar has to overcome. Or at least reduce the inevitable tensions on consumer goods. With these issues, the confidence that Malaysians used to have has been withering gradually, said Professor Kartini. In order to reverse the current trend, Dr. Welsh said that the government needs to reverse the tax increase offer a small economic stimulus and postpone programs such as PODU until it can be better implemented.